Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here and being on time to our Summer Eats webinar. Um, we're very excited to share with you a number of different tools, um, some stories from the field, and all sorts of ways um, in which you can make the most of our new brand and all the accompanying materials this summer um, to maximize our impact. Um, I did want to say that we are recording this webinar and we will be posting it after the fact on the Meals for Kids website. Um, so folks can easily access it there. Um, if you are unable to hear at any point, if you could just chat. Uh, at, so there's a little talk but bubble button. Um, and if you could just chat me if you are uh, having difficulty hearing, and I have several colleagues here who can help to troubleshoot that issue if it comes up. Um, thanks so much for being here. So let's begin. Oh, I got to click. I'm being told. There we go. <laughs> um, so just a quick agenda for today's call. Um, we're going to talk through a little bit about the creation of Summer Eats, um, as well as the importance of branding overall. We're going to talk a lot about tools that have been designed just for you all this summer as sites and sponsors of summer meal programs across Massachusetts. We'll hear from some great uh, story, early successes of folks who've already started adopting Summer Eats branding in some of their materials that they're already developing ahead of the summer plans. Um, and then we'll talk briefly about some social media tools, um, ways to maximize your impact and sort of go beyond what's happening in the flesh to use technology to all of our benefit. And then we'll save questions till the end. Um, and uh, go, we'll go ahead and have some open-ended questions from anyone at that point in time. Just joining. So I just want, oops, I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge um, our, our key partners in, uh, um, in this effort to promote summer meals across the state using the new Summer Eats brand. Um, so obviously our core partner at the Child Nutrition Outreach Program is the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Um, they have been a core funding partner for us and um, have administered summer meals across the state of Massachusetts for as long as it exists. So we're really, we were really appreciating their partnership and the added investments that they've made in the Summer Eats brand. Um, of course, we're always, uh, we at CNOP are based at Project Bread um, and uh, continue to have their support. We have relied heavily on folks outside of our own department to make this project a success and um, are very appreciated appreciative for our project red support. And finally, No Kid Hungry, uh, Share Our Strength has been a key supporter um, in many of the summer grants that we've given out both last year and this year, as well as giving us additional funding for the actual development of the brand itself. So just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge those folks. down. Um, so on today's call, I'm Maura Ackerman. I'm the director of the Child Nutrition Outreach Program here at Project Bread. Um, I'll also be joined later on the call by Karibe Iba from uh, the YMCA of Greater Boston. He's the director of Food and Nutrition Services there, as well as two guests from Salem Public Schools, Patrice Toomey, the assistant director of Food and Nutrition Services, and Millie Canella, who is their Salem Summer Eats Outreach Coordinator for this coming summer. So just to give everyone, you know, I know we're all here for the same cause, but I always like to begin by setting the foundation of why, again, we are all here and why we care about this issue. So we all know that one in three public school students in Massachusetts rely on uh, school meals, and they may not know where to turn when school is out. So that is, hence, uh, Summer Eats being our solution, the Summer Food Service Program uh, nationally, known here in Massachusetts now as Summer Eats. That's going to be the, the terminology that we're going to nail into all of our brains coming forward is uh, less about summer meals, less about the Summer Food Service Program, and really trying to incorporate the language of Summer Eats into all that we talk about and all that we do across the state. Um, I did want to just take a pause to mention that if anyone on the call is new to summer meals programming, um, if this is your first year um, being involved in summer um, in, in Massachusetts, I want to invite you to view our Summer Meals 101 webinar that we produced uh, in February or so. Um, that is up on the mealsforkids.org website. Um, so after this webinar, go ahead back. That'll give you all the core components of the program itself. And today's 
webinar is really about the branding components. All right, so why Summer Eats? So statewide branding we know has huge benefits um, and branding in general has huge benefits. It serves emotional and functional needs. It communicates what the thing is and why it is in general, why it exists. Um, it promotes brand recognition and loyalty. It increases consumer confidence because it conveys, um, again, the what and the quality of, of what it is. Um, it improves recall so that folks actually know what it is that they're talking about. It lends credibility um, and it increases reach. So, you know, uh, in early 2017, we decided let's have a, a brand that helps to communicate across the state all about the Summer Meals Program and the great work that's happening in communities all across the state. Um, this had been, you know, an effort that some communities had undertaken and branded their communities. Others hadn't, that we were using um, some federal materials that spoke more broadly to the program but didn't communicate here locally about the program across our state. So we began engaging at our 2017 uh, statewide summer kickoff um, to bring in voices from, from all of you uh, to talk about what we could incorporate into the brand. And we really heard that folks wanted it to be fun, engaging, inclusive, colorful, and modern. Um, we also looked more broadly at other states who have engaged in the same process and um, lessons that they've learned. So really wanting a tagline that captures the essence of the program, appeals to both kids and teens. We know that teens are sometimes hard to reach and had a very specific sort of summer look and feel that conveyed that sort of light, breezy summer feeling. We worked with Setter Advertising who are based in Natick and have a lot of experience with campaigns targeting youth and families. Um, and what they and we together came up with is the, the brand you see right in front of you, um, and the tagline, free meals for kids and teens. And some of you may recall around the fall at one point, um, we did a survey offering folks several options to give feedback on, and over 80% of folks really wanted the, the term free meals for kids and teens included. Um, and so that's hence the tagline, um, just wanted to you know, stress all of that, uh, very exciting new brand. And the brand's goals are really threefold, to raise awareness about the existence of summer sites across the state, to increase participation, to drive folks, since if they know where sites are, they will hopefully go, um, and to amplify engagement across the state between sites, um, so that sites in the eastern part of the state um, are, are sort of engaging on the same networking and same level as others uh, in the western part of the state and everywhere in between. Okay, so if, in case you're skeptical about what, whether branding really matters, um, I just wanna give you a minute to identify as many of these plants as possible. Which of these plants can you say by name that you recognize? These are all native plants to Massachusetts. You may have seen them on your nature walks or um, at any point. So just invite you to write, jot down as many of these 15 as you recognize, I'll give you five more seconds for that. All right, moving on. Now, how about these? These are the first letters of 26 brands. How many of these compared to the 15 plants that you just recognized? I'm sure many of you got all of them. Um, how many folks can recognize at least, you know, three or four, if not more, of these um, brands. Um, so I think obviously the, the, and I'll give you the key in just a second. So these are, you know, the different brands. I think this is a, a curious activity, so I'll give you a second to sort of match up the ones that, um, you know, came to mind for you with those in the key to the right. Um, but it's a very interesting activity that helps you to recognize just how seeing something that's colorful, that conveys a particular look and feel can really get into your bones. And even folks, you know, I personally don't have television. I don't watch a lot of TV yet. I can still recognize many, many of these um, it ju just from exposure in the grocery store, anywhere else that you might see some of these food brands. So branding does matter. Um, in terms of 
summer branding in particular, um, states across the country, as I mentioned, have been very successful um, with implementing a statewide brand in Alabama. Their summer break spot branding yielded um, a 21% increase in participation in just the year it was um, it was released. Um, so, you know, th these are an opportunity to really bump participation to get folks on board with their excitement about the program and to really build brand loyalty in the same way that the brands that we just talked about have done. All right. So let's just talk about the tools that will be available to you. And let me just pause for one second and go back to the brand benefits. And I think um, the key here is that the adoption of of this brand and the, the impacts that we hope to see of this 21% increase in participation. You know, that's our, that would be our gold standard, our, our, you know, we'd all have a feather in our caps if we, if we reach that number statewide in this coming season. I think what's critical about us doing that is really widespread adoption and ensuring that communities across the state are really making the most of all the tools that are becoming available and coming online this next month. Um, so what you'll need to do is, um, you know, Take these by storm, add your own creativity. We've tried to offer a lot of opportunities to customize and make make real, and you'll hear from uh, Caribe and Patrice and Millie a little bit of, about some of the ways that they're already thinking about that to help spur some ideas for you. Um, but yeah, it requires an all hands on deck approach and for all of us to be adopting this language and imagery um, in all of our work so that we're really promoting this to families across the state. All right. So the tools themselves, um, I just wanted to mention that all of the tools include a, a consistency in the four points of access. So this is an example of uh, one of the postcards. So uh, you'll see in the sort of lower right uh, corner, the, the call, visit, text, download. So these are calling the food source hotline, which will connect families with the meal sites closest to them. They can visit the meal finder at mealsforkids.org where they'll be able to plug in their address and download um, a list of the nearest sites to them. They can text either food or comida to 877-877. They'll get a text back in the language of their choosing um, and will be able to sort of plug in a, an address that could be a work address. It could be, I'm visiting my aunt in the other part of the state, what's near me there? Um, so it could be any address and then it comes back with the 10 closest sites there. Um, and then there's also the Summer Eats app. And I'll, I'll just note that Summer Eats in that context is just one word. So if you don't have Summer Eats as one word, it won't um, come up with the correct uh, down, app to download. But those four access points are really the things that we want to drive folks to. So in, in your individual communities, you're welcome to create site lists and maps and all of those things. But um, do want to stress that offering these four access points, they're going to have up-to-date information that can be updated over the course of the summer. We get we get regular downloads from DESE um, with any updates to your meal applications. Those come, come right to our map and go to the text site and go to the app and all of the places. So, um, so all of those are updated on a regular basis throughout the course of the summer. Um, so on, on one end, please do keep your uh, applications with the state up to date so that that information then trickles down to us. So if uh, timing of your meal site changes, share that with Desi so that they can share it with us so that these access points are really, really up to date and high quality. They are, the materials are also multilingual. Um, so these are examples of four different postcards um, in English, Spanish, Haitian Creole, and Cape Verdean Creole. We will also have Brazilian Portuguese this year. All the printed materials that you receive will be double-sided English, Spanish, so that you don't even have to ask someone which language they speak. Um, all the materials will have those two options on one side and the other. Um, the Haitian Creole, Cape Verdean Creole, and Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese will be um, available for order, um, and you can also download them and print them yourself, um, but they won't come in your kit. Um, and then I also wanted to just mention, we hope to have even more languages in future years, so if there's a language that's not represented in the materials that we have so far, 
um, that you would like to see, please email cnop at projectbread.org um, and flag that for us so that we can work that into next year's planning. So for this year, we have those five languages that I mentioned. Um, and uh, the printed materials themselves will be that will be shipped to you automatically are in English and Spanish. We've also worked to create tools that are customizable for you. So on the left here, you'll see um, a customizable poster that you can download. Um, this is a version of it, it's not quite final, but I wanted to share it with you nonetheless. So that white box on the side there, you can customize with your own text. It could be for a particular site if you really wanted to do a Blitz Day and share that information very, very locally. Um, it has the opportunity to plug in lo logos of your local partners. So if you know the school and the local YMCA are partnering, both logos could go on this flyer. Um, we can also, I'm, I'm sharing the Boston example because they've already ordered many of their materials, but we have the option of customizing the Summer Eats logo for you in this way, of just splashing across the top of it uh, the name of your community. Um, so that's a nice way, and, and we do have this in color as well. I, I'm pulling it from a t-shirt image, so that's why it's black and white, but um, to be able to just sort of name the, na the name of your town, we know that's important to some of you. Um, you know, having the statewide Summer Eats brand, but then also being able to connect locally to Boston or Worcester or um, any of the other communities across the state. All right, so I've mentioned the kit a few times and I just wanted to talk about what the kit is. So um, each of you, each sponsor, I should say, so some of you may be sites on the call, but each sponsor across the state will receive two shipments, um, which will include all of the following materials. Um, so, and these will be shipped to the address that we have on file. So um, whatever address is, again, most up to date in your uh, application with DESI, that will um, be where the materials are shipped to. So hopefully that please please do keep your applications up to date um, and we'll get we'll get these shipped out to you. Um, it will include 11 by 17 posters. Again, those will be double sided English and Spanish, a number of postcards, door hangers. Um, there'll be bookmarks. Uh, summary fact sheet, and that fact sheet um, replaces the brochure. Um, it's really a, a tool for engaging other community partners and joining you as sites or sponsors or uh, promotion partners um, across the state. And the remaining, uh, the remaining materials are really focused on anyone who might enjoy um, visiting a meal site. Um, there'll be summary stickers an order form, and a bunch of other tools that uh, will help guide you in your work this summer. Um, shipment two will be arriving a, a few weeks later. It'll include one to two banners per sponsor, and as well as one lawn site sign per site. So each, lawn si each site will have the opportunity to put up a lawn sign, and we invite you to put up a banner at you know, your largest site or your flagship site, whatever it might be. Um, we know that uh, you know, those are much more expensive to produce, so unfortunately we can't offer them to everyone. We are able to give you any of these files if you want to edit them or produce them yourself, so um, we will have the design files available for you to um, download as well. So, what does Summer East Lab look like? Um, and I have to give credit to the artist behind this drawing, my husband. Um, but just, I just wanted to give a sense of, you know, Ideally, when once all of these materials are deployed and you as the sponsor are engaging your sites as well as other partners, volunteers, and blitz days and um, the local shops um, in putting out materials, you are really sort of plastering the community with these inf all of the information about Summer Eats. And the branding is really hitting people from a lot of different directions. They say that you need to see something seven times for to really, really sink in. Um, and so here, here we are seeing things seven or eight times. I can't, <laughs> I can't quite count um, in in this one little image. So thinking about that, I'll also say that in selected communities, we have been able to purchase thanks to the support of our funders um, several billboards. So you'll be seeing billboards um, across different communities. Those. Um, so that's what they'll sort of look like in context. So keep an eye out for those as you travel the state this summer. Those will go up at the end of June. Um, and then we'll also have 
um, several digital assets available for you. Um, they will include lo logos, both the download, uh, downloadable high quality and JPEG versions of the general summary uh, logo in both color and black and white, um, as well as the sort of customizable splash of your city name. Um, and we may actually, now that I'm thinking about it, the fonts are a little complicated, so we may actually um, have you request if you want us to generate a um, a splashed logo for you. We can do that very quickly, but it probably needs to be done on our end, I'm realizing. Um, we'll have a Facebook cover photo for you that you can upload um, to, if you, you have Facebook for your uh, sponsor, you know, your sponsor, your site, anything like that. Um, there'll be a social media toolkit, there'll be a sample press release, the customizable flyer I mentioned, a sample t-shirt design, and probably more. Um, but those things will all be available for download. And then we really want to encourage you to create your own materials. So these are just a few examples that we've seen already. So this is the Fitchburg uh, Nutrition Matters Meals for Kids Summer Eats van that will be delivering meals um, through their new mobile meal program that will launch this summer. Um, so they did a great little splash here uh, with the logo itself. Um, Taunton has uh, created food service shirts for their staff. So they're polos, they look very professional. Um, I've heard some people talking about sunglasses and we may, we may even have some to give away at different events that we'll be traveling at um, as we come across the state this summer. Um, uh, Caribe will talk a little bit more about this, but the Greater Boston YMCA had this great idea of having a pull-up banner. Um, so when they're out at a site, they can sort of, and it's not too windy a day. We all know when, about those windy days outside in the summer. Um, but if it's not too windy a day, you can pull that up and sort of make a, make an additional display right there beside your, uh, your meal service. So really want to encourage you to think outside of the box about the different ways that you might be able to utilize this brand in the ways that you produce materials uh, beyond just what's provided to you in your kit. And then I also wanted to acknowledge that um, many of you have already started the process of branding and have had, you know, a year or more behind you of building brand recognition in your communities. Um, and so trying to think through with us, you, you have the CNOP outreach coordinators at your disposal and other members of our team can be helpful in that regard, but thinking through how you might put your logo side by side. Uh, Patrice and Millie will talk in just a moment about how they actually incorporated both logos um, into a single one. Uh, that's a really exciting idea as well. So we'd love to work with you if you already have brand recognition um, in your community to try to incorporate Summer Eats into that. So this is just one example of, you know, different core brands being put up side by side with one another. Um, and how it can really work. All right, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Caribe to speak a little bit about what is happening um, with the Greater Boston YMCA. We're gonna just make sure that we unmute the right person. Caribe, are you there? Caribe? I think we need to unmute Hi. everyone. Can you guys hear me? Right. Can, you can, can, we, can you begin? Yes, I can begin. Hi, good afternoon all. Uh, my name is Karibe. Hello? 600 kids. Can you hear me now? Hello? Yeah. Are other people able to hear us? Hi. So you got to think Anthony is in traffic. Right. How many hours did spend Hi, can you give him me now? No. No. I was going to say, they have like that. I'm trying to hear it. I can hear yes. you. Yes. You can hear Karibe? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh. Can you hear anyone else? No. <laughs> All right. 
Um, Hello? Colin. Are you on the phone right now? Mm -hmm. Hi, can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Go ahead, Free Bay. Okay. I can begin? All right, perfect. Yep. Hi, good afternoon all. Uh, my name is Karibe, and I am the Director of Food and Nutrition Services. Um, can we go to the next slide? Karibe, you can go ahead. Okay. Um, can you go to the next slide? Give me one second. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Um, so as we were um, planning on creating materials for the summer, um, so our biggest input, like Mara said, was to focus on um, raising awareness. Sorry, can you guys hear me? There's a lot of background noise. I can hear you. Okay. Um, so, We're going to try to mute uh, everyone other than you once we figure out which one you are. Sorry about the difficulty okay. here. No problem. But I'm going to continue. Okay. okay. Um, so as we, as we um, planned on... Karibe, give us one second. We're going to try to figure this out. Somebody's talking in the background, and I want to be respectful to you. Hang on. Okay. Take your time. Oh my gosh, my sister. Okay, so I think I'm the only one that's now unmuted, so I am going to begin. Um, thank you guys so much for the um, for the time. So as we were planning on um, creating brand recognition within the Y, um, so that we had several things in mind. We wanted to make sure that we were, you know, raising, we were raising awareness, increasing participation, but making sure that we had a uniform approach um, in regards to the materials we created. Um, so up here is we have a banner that clearly says in summary it has the four points of access and we also partnered with the boss, um, bcyf to create the banners so, so it's very uniform um can we go to the next page so the second aspect of our mission was to just create consistent messaging so as Mora um, mentioned earlier the four points of access which is um, the calling texting, the website, and the app were going to be fundamental in order to just provide access to our parents on which sites we were serving. So we made sure that all our posters, which is also going to be included in two different languages, have all these um, touch points. Um, can we go to the next one? And so we also try to be creative. This is a um, it's a beautiful logo, Summer Eats, and we thought of how we can actually incorporate it into all different ideas going forward when it comes to materials. So some of the brainstorming ideas we came up with um, are stuff like bookmarks. We were thinking of having lunch boxes that we can also give out to um, our students in camps that would have the Summer Eats logo. So when they go home, you know, their parents can also be exposed to this brand. So parents whenever they see summer eats regardless of if it's a ymca camp or any of our partner sites they can be very comfortable to approach the site and know that they are welcomed to always to get a free meal during the summer and so other um, items that we thought of us also um, can get tents we thought of banners posters 
stickers for the students as well. And this is what we had in mind. And I think that's all for me. Thank you guys very much. And I think um, Patrice from the Salem Public School will be speaking next. Patrice and Millie Hi. could begin. Hi, this is Patrice. Can you hear us? Okay. I can hear you now, Patrice. Okay. Um, so, hello, everybody, and um, thank you for having us, Maura. And um, we are um, excited to be here because we really firmly believe in the branding process. In Salem, um, we've worked for the last three years to increase our um, summer participation, and one of the things that was very critical to it was establishing a brand that was recognizable and having, you know, that brand recognition at all of our sites and in all of our schools and literally everywhere we could put our, our logo. Um, so um, once we um, went to the summer kickoff and found that the um, summer program was going to be um, using this new statewide brand, we were extremely excited, but we also were, you know, trying to figure out how we could incorporate our new brand that we had just established with the state brand, which we felt was really important. Um, and we feel as though, I mean, you can see here, I mean, you can advance the slide if you'd like. Um, well, as you can see, we incorporated Salem, which was our original logo into the summer eats our program had been called salem summer meal so there's a lot of you know uh synchronicity and um we have found creative ways to you know utilize the branding as well we create magnets for our trucks because we don't do wraps because these trucks are the the ones we use all year and um so we switch out our our signage on the on the trucks throughout the year and this gives us flexibility um, we do these in English. The nice thing this year is that we have side-by-side -side English and Spanish, whereas in the past we've had to have two different uh, two-by-four magnets to um, in, in either language. Um, can you advance the slide, please? Um, this is a, uh, unfortunately, this didn't come through entirely right, but um, this is uh, somehow the Salem uh, colors got lost, but you can see above, these were our banners last year. So our banners in two different languages, um, and Salem Summer Meals, and we're trying to just replace it um, so that we can use our existing banners. We're looking for ways right now to put something with the Summer Eats over Summer Meals so that we can um, keep our banners um, out there, because all the other information is pretty accurate. Um, we can move forward. Um, we also have a version of the Salem Summer Eats. So last year, as you can see, we had this grid pattern that we were doing this year. We love the new pattern um, showing the site schedule. Um, and we are doing this back in front with um, um, Spanish and English, which are the primary languages in our, our community. Um, you can move forward. Um, and so we also are taking Salem Summer Eats and we're putting it together and we are going to be using it as you saw on the previous slide. We kind of use it going up to five because we had we had completed doing all of our collaterals last summer 
So we're just going to replace summer meals with summer eats in this format, and um, and we're going to take it from there. Millie, would you have things you wanted to add? Um, so, so um, my name is Millie, and I'm the outreach coordinator for the summer meals program. Um, I'm also a registered dietitian, so just like everyone else, I understand the importance of the summer meals to meet the basic needs of vulnerable populations and also to help the learning retention of all the students. Um, I also know that sometimes there can be stigma to these meals for the free meals, and sometimes that's a barrier for people. So something that, you know, makes a difference is the way that you market it. So I really love the new logo. My first impression was that it was, made me think of fun and sunshine. And I think that's everything more was saying that um, that's what you're going for. You want it to be fun and playful. And the change from summer meals to summer eats, I thought that was great. Um, in a way to, again, be more contemporary and kind of reach the teens and the kids. So um, blending the logos together, like Patrice was saying, it was really important to keep the Salem logo that we had already, you know, established for several years and that our staff, our students, and our parents are already familiar with. So combining that seamlessly, and Patrice did a wonderful job with that along with help from Project Red. And now that we have all our updated and, you know, simplified marketing materials, we can distribute these. Um, all across the community, and we're working with the Salem Public Access and Access Television to get that out there. We're even working with the local Salem Cinema, and um, we're going to, you know, just like more was saying, plaster these everywhere. We're, you know, planning a blitz and everything. So I'm really excited to get this out there. And um, we have also um, done some of the things that you had mentioned, Maura. Um, we, we've, you know, we do sunglasses. We do. Um, pull-up banners, we do um, flyers, we have instructions, we have site signs, we have, um, we use the logo on literally everything. We put it in, in all of the materials that we purchase for our sites that are for activities. We pretty much put them on all of our books. Um, anywhere and everywhere that we can put this, this logo, it goes. <laughs> and it's been very effective. People are definitely, um, you know, recognizing, they definitely recognized us, and it, and I think it really speaks to the credibility. It gives us credibility. We used to be just, you know, kind of out of park or something, and, you know, now we have this recognizable brand that, you know, and it's on T-shirts and it's on, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, aprons? Uh, well, we are thinking of putting it on aprons, but we're also having, um, you know, things that you can hang around your neck that, um, lanyards. yeah, lanyards, thank you. I mm -hmm. can get that word out. Um, and so, you know, we just, we literally are, as Millie said, we're putting it on everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that the program is recognizable. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Project Fred, for helping us um, with this. Um, I got a lot of help from them putting my Salem with my summary. <laughs> thank you very much. Great. Thank you to Patrice and Millie and Karibe. I think um, these examples just really help to highlight um, the great work that's already happening. I think it's so incredible. This brand was only unveiled in, in mid-February at, at our annual kickoff event, um, and they've already done so much work to incorporate this. I think the key takeaway here is that um, – you know, you are all already doing so much work around promotion and outreach in your communities, and you're doing an incredible job at that. And, and Summer Eats is just another tool to help amplify the efforts that you're already engaging in um, and to make sure that those have maximum impact. Um, so just really wanted to credit these two two, folk, two groups that have already done that and to stress um, that, that Project Red and CNOP are here to help and to back you up. Um, so if you have particular questions that are unique to your context, we're very happy to help support you um, to, to think those through. Um, so to just talk a little bit more about some key opportunities, um, obviously I think this, this goes without saying, but you all know the, the importance of distributing um, all of the materials to different uh, locations throughout your communities, and you know which ones are the most impactful um, to get the word out to families, kids, and teens in your community. Um, I think doing a, you know, the timing of our kits mailing is very intentional to hopefully hit 
hit before the end of school so that you can utilize these materials in your school outreach at the end of the school year. I really encourage you to do that. Um, and to also engage some of these folks that I've listed on this slide, um, other, you know, other partners, um, and really be boots on the ground to get flyers up to uh, make sure that others are being great ambassadors for Summer Eats in your community. We know that there are great examples of the police department and fire stations helping to um, raise awareness about the availability of summer meals, um, and, and we can engage them even further with this exciting branding. Um, Blitz days, I know many of you are already doing those, but just to just to reiterate, you know, getting volunteers together to actually um, canvas in your community to do some door knocking, to talk to families, to put out door hangers, um, pass out postcards, stand outside the grocery store and talk to people, make sure that folks um, know about this. And despite all of our efforts, we know that we're only reaching 15% of youth um, across Massachusetts and who could, could really benefit from this program. So um, really recruiting volunteers and other community partners, as I've mentioned before, to, to pull this together in the weeks before the summer meals program actually begins um, to make sure that folks know that, that there is summer eats in their community, that um, where those sites might be and who to call or where to go, you know, the four access points so that they can learn more about the program and how to access meal sites that are most convenient in terms of time and location for them. Uh, this is a little photo of Caribe. <laughs> um, so Caribe is there in the middle in the red hat. Um, so this this is just a, a photo to um, emphasize the importance of different events and making sure that you know folks are out um, and that you're highlighting summer eats when you are at end of year celebrations that you might otherwise attend um, at your own kickoffs and launch events for um, for your sites. Um, and, and your programs in, in your community, um, but also to think about how you can utilize um, different um, events, different branding in the different events you, you already are running all, all summer long to help make sure that both kickoffs and spike days to help increase uh, participation later in the summer are really well attended and have that great summer eats feel. Um, so these are some t-shirts that uh, were produced for the walk uh, the Walk for Hunger, um, and, and Caribe and some folks from the Greater Boston YMCA came out and sort of uh, simulated a, uh, a summer eat site along with the Boston Office of Food Access. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about engage. Sorry about the background noise. Give me one second. Technical difficulties. All right, sorry about the technical difficulty there for a moment. Just want to make sure that everybody has good sound quality. Um, so these are just two opportunities I wanted to highlight. So um, also at the walk, uh, Mayor Walsh from Boston came out uh, in a Summer Eats t-shirt. I think, um, you know, if if you have the budget in, um, in your community or if you've gotten a grant through DESE or Project Bread uh, to produce t-shirts, I really encourage you to do so. Um, being out and being sort of visible with the brand, uh, you know, embodying the sort of uh, essence that Millie spoke to very well of just this being a fun program accessible to all, not a needs-based program, um, but really one that can reduce stigma, I think has a lot of power in it. So if you can get elected officials from your community to actually be sporting the brand, whether it's a pin or a button um, or a sunglasses or a sticker or a whole t-shirt, you know, all of those things. I think um, having your elected official talk about the importance of this program and be an ambassador for the brand would be wonderful. Um, on the right in this slide, there's also an example of how we've engaged a funder um, and we've produced these sandwich boards that um, we'll, Malden will have outside of their summer, summer eat sites um, to sort of uh, highlight the funder's relationship to summer eats and their support for this program locally in that community. So that's another nice way of sort of blending opportunities for visibility for the funders who support you as well as incorporating the brand. 
All right, and just to speak briefly about social media, I want to be cognizant of time and make sure there's time for questions. So um, I think many of you heard a lot more about this at, at the kickoff, but just to think through using any of the social media channels that are at your disposal that you already have access to, I think it's um, it's a challenge to keep up with social media, generating great social media content in the course of our very busy summers when we all have lots of other jobs. But just to think about how you can utilize these tools, we'll be offering a social media toolkit that will come both in your kit as a printed version as well as be available for download on the website. Um, and we'll be pushing that out to you through email as well. But I did just want to mention the importance of, of sort of amplifying your on-the-ground efforts with efforts on social media. So really encourage you to, when you're posting, to um, tag those who you're partnering with, particularly funders, anyone else. Um, use a hashtag or different hashtags, and I'll, I'll give you a little um, you know, suggestion for one hashtag that we'd love to see everyone using. Um, and then link to other resources, incorporate photographs. Um, some of our photographs are just really beautiful um, with the programs that we're offering this summer. So um, make sure that, that you're highlighting the incredible visuals of the programs that you're offering, of the food that you're serving to kids across the state, um, and the fun programming that you're providing as well, side by side with the meals. Um, so really want to encourage everyone to use the hashtag SummerEatsMA. Um, so that will enable us to um, to connect statewide and to do searches and see who's using the, the brand and how it's being used and to make sure that we're retweeting and tracking and um, supporting everyone to get further amplification um, of, of the messages that they're, that they're sending out. Please also tag Project Bread and Meals for Kids MA. That's the CNOP handle. Um, and, and then we will also retweet those. So we have very big followings and um, trying to get amplify the messages that you're already sending out, um, we are happy to help with that. Um, if you tag us and let us know that you're, you're talking about Summer Eats today on social media. So just things to think in, keep in mind that um, there are younger and younger social media users, so we may actually get to reach a lot of the youth who we're trying to reach directly if we are in actively engaging with social media, um, we can also reach their parents and grandparents that way. And so thinking about who it is that you're trying to reach with a given message and making sure you're crafting it to that audience. Also, the more you engage, the more they engage. So the more um, traffic you're getting to your site, the more traffic will come to your sites. Um, and so really making sure that you're posting regularly, that using those um, those time, timing guidelines that the prior slide had with each channel, um, and making sure to include photos and graphics whenever possible. When you have a visual attached to any tweet or Facebook post or any, or mess, I mean, Instagram is all images, um, you get 42% more engagement. So um, definitely do that. It's okay to cross promote. If your neighboring town is doing something great, share that. Give them credit for the work that they're doing. Um, cross promote with other partners who are going to be at an event with you, all of those things. Um, and then just a reminder that you should never post photos of any people without their consent. Um, so please do keep that in mind. All right. Um, and with that, I'd love to open it up for questions um, and uh, give everyone the opportunity. Okay. So we can just do sort of popcorn style um, if the, if anyone has a question. Anyone? All right. Hearing none, I'm going to move on to the next slide. So let's see. All right. So just what to expect coming up next um, from us so that, that you have an idea of the timeline. So again, kits will be delivered to all sponsors in early June. Um, and then later in June, uh, 
Oh, we do have a couple of questions coming in. So maybe we'll chat questions and then we'll go back to them. Just let me finish the timeline. Um, so if you want to just chat your questions in, that may be the best way because we're unable to hear some folks. So um, Sarah, I saw that you said you had a question, so feel free to um, to chat that to us and we'll an answer it aloud. Um, so just going through the timeline. Um, so we want to encourage you during the week of June 18th to hang posters and flyers particularly in schools so that folks can see them during that um, those last days leading up to the um, end of the school year. Uh, at the end of June, make sure you're visiting MealsForKids.org for all the digital materials and new updates. Um, using our um, suggested press release the week of, the week of July, prior to July 4th to see if you can seek local media placements. Um, holding a blitz day right after July 4th, and then keep you know hoping hoping to host an opening event at a site um, that you might have sometime in mid July, and then a closeout event at sites as you're closing out the season. Um, and throughout the summer, we really want to encourage you to reach out at any time with questions. So just to go back to, I believe a question came in over chat. So I, so Sarah's question is, can you print some magnetic posters to wrap trucks? Also, when will you upload the black and white logo so we can use it on T-shirts? Okay. Great question, Sarah. So um, for, for um, what is included in the kit is what we have funding to do. So magnets are going to be something that we can work with you to design, but we are not able to print those. Um, out of our budget. So, you know, Sarah, as a grantee, I know, you know, we could talk uh, offline as part of your outreach plan about how to use some of the budget um, through your Project Bread Grant to support that. But yes, indeed, I think that would be that would be the method to use, but we do not have that for everyone statewide. So I have to say no to that. Um, we can upload the black and white logo. Um, what I'm going to say is if you want the splash across it, please email CNOP at projectbread.org and we will create a splash logo. Um, so for Sarah, you know, Gloucester, Summer Eats, if that's what you want, we can do that. If you want just the black and white logo, um, we'll upload just the black and white Summer Eats without the splash that anyone can use. But we're unable to share the splash one and have you uh, personalize that. We'll, we'll personalize it on our end and send that to you. The customizable poster will be available on or before June 1st. That was a question from Ellen. Thanks, Ellen. Um, so we're, we're working on finalizing the customizable poster, and that will go up. All the digital resources will be up by, by June 1st. Did I say ju July? Sometimes I have trouble <laughs> with that. June 1st, excuse me. So all the digital assets will definitely be up by June 1st, but we can get a uh, black and white logo version up and probably a t-shirt version, um, just with some suggestions of having funder logos on the back. Any other questions that folks want to chat in to us? Okay. So just one last slide. Um, just again, just like to, to leave us on a high and motivational and exciting note. I think Millie did a great job of um, and our other speakers of, of really talking about how important branding is um, and how it can help us um, in all of our work. But Summer Eats is here to make your life easier. It's to reduce your burden on uh, developing new materials. Um, it increases your capacity to advertise and cross-promote across organizations and across the state. Um, it enables us to all have a consistency, which lends legitimacy and safety to the program, and it broadens our outreach strategies and helps us to think creatively about new ways of promoting our programs. And I think it, it's easy to get lost in all of this, but the the reason for all of this is to increase participation and ensure that we have fewer hungry kids across the state in Massachusetts during the summer months. And your work is so critical to all of that. And so we just really want to thank you for all that you do and hope that this tool provides the support that you need to make your programs even more successful this summer. So with that, I want to thank you. This is our team here at CNOP um, and at Project Bread. Um, thank you for all that you do. 
um, and really invite you to reach out to us to ask your questions individually, to visit mealsforkids.org slash summer eats for those downloadable materials, which we'll be continually updating, um, and to reach out to us by email or by phone um, for any support that we can provide. We're so excited for all that you're doing this summer and really hope to hear great stories from the field um, throughout the summer. And again, this this, record, this uh, webinar was recorded. Um, thank you all for your patience with the technical difficulties midway through, and especially for Karibe for his patience. Um, and we will be posting the webinar recording also on the mealsforkids.org website. So um, if any of your colleagues look to uh, would like to view this later on, feel free to share the link with them. Thank you all so much, and have a great Wednesday. All right, bye. Thank you.